नमस्कार लेट मी वेलकम यू ऑल टू टूडेज एपिसोड ऑफ सीता लर्निंग एसेंशियल्स दोज हु आर फॉलोइंग आवर चैनल आर ऑलरेडी अवेयर ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग ऑन वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स टेक्निक्स कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्लेइंग सितार नॉट ओनली ऑफ ऑन प्ले ओनली प्लेइंग सितार बट ऑन डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ म्यूजिक ऑल्सो इन अवर लास्ट एपिसोड वी डिस्कस्ड वट राग इज what are different traits and features and specialities by which one rag differs from the other what are the different groupings and what are the different you know aspects to differentiate from each other today we will discuss on how to practice on a particular rag because sometimes we get um question from students that we are practicing on the scale on the pathat but once we are learning a rag how we can do kind of technical practice on a specific rag because rag always does not allow to have the to do the flattened movement straight up straight down sometimes don't allow and also there are certain exclusion inclusion rules also in the rag so we just cannot cannot play sare gama bada ni sa ni dhaba ma gare sa ni or sare gama bada ni sa sa ni dhaba ma gare sa in all the ragas you know certain as we have understood in our last episode certain exclusion inclusion rules are there selection of the notes are there certain in certain ragas certain notes are varjit certain notes are combination of notes are treated in twisted or vakra movement so whatever we have practiced in a scale for an example in bilabal scale mostly we do times number of repetitions but you will get surprised that even rag bilabal will not allow this sare gama pada nisa because in the rag bilabal so ma you see clearly it is varjit and re and dha are having kind of twisted movements so there are certain rules in rag bilabal which we will discuss in our episode on bilabal maybe sometime later but essentially what i want to mention here this flattened movements sapat or palta for an example this kind of palta we cannot play in any rag Will not allow us to do that because it goes against the rules of the rag. Now, then what we can do? We have to abide by the rules of the rag. For an example, if we take Yaman rag, Yaman, Sa and Pa are varjit in ascending. That means once we cannot do Sa Re Ga or Pa Da Ni. We cannot do. But Ni Sa Re Sa and Ma Pa Da Ba. This is allowed. So some students ask in Yaman, Dhani Sare, how we are doing Dhani Sare because sahs are not allowed in ascending, not like that. Once we are going till Ga, we cannot use Sa, and once we are going till Ni, we cannot use Pa. Okay, for your information, we will discuss in detail in when when we cover Ra Yaman. But in Yaman, if we have to practice Sa part, we cannot do just like Kalyan Thak. Kalyan Thak. practice okay scale practice now for if we practice on rag yaman it we have to exclude sa and pa in ascending now some people say if we have to practice on tin tal or ek tal so this is unbalanced right ni re ga ma da ni sa seven and coming back it is eight so you can borrow some notes from here and there and make it eight and follow rag yaman in any case we cannot deviate from the rag but we can borrow some notes from previous octave or next octave for an example we can repeat some notes okay for an example this is the perfect sapat practice on ragya mantra
So in in middle octave mostly and few notes and from uh, lower octave and higher. And then we can practice the same thing cross octave as we used to do for supper practice. We have done in for the thought or scale. This in Bilabal, neither Bilabal nor Yaman or any other. So, if we have to do on Yaman, we have to change it so that it suits Rag Yaman. Practice any palta, which we generally practice in Kalyan Thad. We might practice. But will Rag Yaman allow us? No, it will not. So what we have to do? Madhanisa we can do. Then we can do. Or else we can exclude sa and pa fully just to avoid any confusion in ascending. then Nidha Mama will not be good because part of Nidha so, so this flat and palta might not be suitable so in Yaman Tan generally you will see palta is taken in the ascending but in descending mostly support is used for example assemble Tan Say Bhupali, Durga, then Malkons, Meg, Dhani, this kind of ragas, Hamsudhani, then there are many other ragas, Madhukons, Chandrakons. So these ragas are mostly pentatonic, right? That means five notes are there. So, for example, if I take the example of Bhupali, only five notes. Then sa re ga pa ta sa sa ga pa ga re sa. Now, you see, these ragas are not having, you know, complexity in terms of vakra movement. Generally, they are flat. So here, we can just exclude the notes which are varjit and play apart by borrowing some notes from other octaves because only five notes are there. So. For an example, we can go, you know, without any kind of worry. Consecutive notes. Mandrasa, but 
I will try. So this kind of practice we can do across octave with consecutive note, which does not have much complexity. Just exclude the virgin notes and then you are there. Okay. And practicing paltas are also comparatively easier because there are no other rules, just you have to exclude the virgin notes. For an example, So this way you can practice. Now <clears throat> there are certain ragas which have twisted movements and certain exclusion inclusion uh, rules also. For an example, Sa Bihar. Sa Sudha and Re are Durbal in descending and Varjit in ascending. And you cannot do pa ma ma ga consecutive notes. You cannot do ma pa ga ma ga or pa ma pa ga ma pa ma ga. There are certain ways. So you cannot use flattened movements. So you have to use the rag based chalan. So. get deviate from uh, rag behalf the norms of the rag needs to be followed so if we have to practice cross octave If we have to use palta, it is very difficult. We cannot use flat palta here. In ascending, somehow we can use uh, in this selective way, but in descending, we can't. So here Pancham is fully Varjit and Re is Varjit in ascending. And the twisting move, twisted movement or Vakra movement is there in We can do is not allowed. Flattened Magadesa is not allowed, it is always Gama Desa. So if you have to practice Sapat. Many options.
If you have any kind of this kind of practice, you can share in the comment section of this uh, video. For any rag, if you have any support practice uh, in middle octave, cross octave, do share for everyone's reference what you do, what your Guruji has um, you know, recommended. You be, you, be, you be a vocalist, instrumentalist, does not matter. Rag is the common thing that we all practice. The mediums are different for us. Now, if you have to, in Ragas, we have to play cross of Panjam, <laughs> some more Ragasri, this is Varjit. Yeah, so, so we have uh, discussed uh, these special cases of Ragas, uh, pentatonic Ragas, Ragas with Vakra movement, and there are certain very complex Ragas like Darwari. Um, in Darwari, we cannot do any Sapat movement, we cannot do any Palta movement. What we can do, we can just follow the movement of the Rag. can only follow the the movement which rag allows for an example this is one example even we can do the position of the ray needs to be uh, gandhar needs to be maintained you see how the dha and ga are coming we have to have lean and gum in this kind of ragas otherwise the features of the ragas will not be clear like Malpos, again you can follow the features which we have discussed for Bhupali, you can follow the same principle for practice. And finally, before we conclude, I wanted to discuss the uh, importance of playing a particular tan. You can see that there are certain tans which make loop, little longer tans, maybe 12 mantra or 16 mantra or around that or even longer. These tans where from where it starts it ends around that particular note so if it starts from knee then it ends at sa or if it starts on tibrama for an example it ends ar around pa okay so those tans create loop so taking those tans and practicing them in loop makes a lot of difference so this is one of the very famous tan which uh, in many ragas this pattern is followed in vocalist and instrumentalist as long as many times as you can Now you can extend this 
by addition of uh, you know certain blocks of before and after practice on a particular rag so that in uh, our hand is used to with the twisting and turning which the ragas are having or certain exclusion inclusion rules or vakra movement or any kind of rules a rag might have or you know uh, position of a note right gandhar in darbari we have seen how gandhar and dhribat is being maintained while with the fast practice so some people say these are ragas are you know made for alap meant for alap Uh, with all my humility i wanted to tell if one can maintain the principles of the rag or the feeling of the rag even in the fast speed why not why not to try why not to take the challenge right without dividing the rag if one can play faster then then why not to try the same so once we have once our hands uh, are capable enough to handle the subtlety and uh, nuances of the rag even in the faster speed and if we understand um, the the nuances of the rag the feeling of the rag and if, we, if we can maintain then we, we we can try it that's my humble opinion and with this note let me conclude this episode uh, how to practice on a rag if you have any question please drop a note as a comment in the comment box and also what you can do you can drop me an email which is given in the description of this video in all my videos my email address is mentioned you can drop a note and um, then we can discuss this further yeah thank you for your time thanks for watching and practice well and stay well namaskar